This video is sponsored by Squarespace. I don't know about you, but recently I've had to cut down on meat because it has got so stupidly expensive, which means that when I'm craving meat, I reach for the cheaper, tougher cuts like beef ribs and lamb shanks more and more. When cooked with the right techniques, these tough cuts transform into ridiculously craveable tender meat. And as a result, I prefer them to more expensive cuts. So today I'm going to show you a ridiculously simple and universal technique that you can use to make any tough cut of meat fall off the bone tender. The way we're going to achieve this mouthwatering tenderness is by cooking the meat as targan basal or an onion tagine. This popular Egyptian recipe involves slow cooking with a ton of onions, which caramelize and soften, adding loads of rich and umami flavors as well as moisture. Add on our special way of wrapping meat to keep it juicy, and without even adding a drop of liquid, the meat will be so tender you won't even need teeth to enjoy this meal. The only thing you will need is a cut of meat, preferably something gelatinous and tough, and it can come from any animal. I've done this with beef ribs and oxtail, but lamb shanks are the best. This cut is essentially the hard-working lower leg muscles that sheep use to walk around, and so they get pretty tough from how much they used. These four shanks weigh two kilos, so the measurements are based on that, and you can scale it up or down as you need. The first step to getting this meat ultra tender is to sear it. Place a frying pan on the stove over high heat and add a high smoke point oil or some clarified butter. When it's heated, add a few pieces of meat to sear in batches and fry them for a few minutes on each side. Rotate them every few minutes, then remove them when they are mostly browned like this. You could totally skip the searing step as it can get a bit messy, but you'll miss out on a bit of extra flavor if you do. Once you've seared the meat, it's time to prep the onions. And like I said, you'll need a ton. Per kilogram of meat, you can use anything from two kilos down to half a kilo. I personally like a one-to-one -one ratio, and since I'm doing two kilos of lamb, two kilos of onions will give me plenty of deliciously caramelized pieces. Slice the onions in half, and then chop them into strips about one centimeter wide. After cutting the onions, take a few seconds to roughly break the layers apart. Then it's time to transfer them into a baking dish. And here's where our special technique comes into play. We want to keep the meat super moist as it cooks. So to stop any liquid from evaporating, we're going to wrap and seal it using baking paper. Measure a piece of baking paper three times the length of the baking dish. This is quite stiff and impossible to wrap, so we need to soften it. Scrunch it up into a loose ball, then head over to the sink and run it under the cold tap for about 10 seconds. Squish it together, then squeeze out the excess water. And now when you unfold it, the paper should be super flexible, pretty much like fabric. You'll easily be able to spread it out to line the baking dish and place it so it's evenly overhanging on both sides. Transfer the sliced onions to the dish and then it's time to season them. Add four teaspoons of salt, three teaspoons of black pepper, or two if you can't handle the heat, and one teaspoon of ground cardamom. The last seasoning is half a teaspoon of nutmeg. Freshly grate it over the dish to add a lovely warming flavor. Give the onions a thorough mix to spread out all the seasonings. And now it's time to introduce the star of the show. Push some onions to the side to clear a space for the meat, leaving a bed of onions for it to sit on. Then add the pieces of meat to the tray and cover them back up with the onions. Once you fit all the meat, spread out the onions to make it nice and flat. And now to seal them in. Fold one side of paper over the tray and tuck it down the sides of the dish. Then repeat and do the same thing with the other side. Although this isn't an airtight seal, the paper will trap and prevent most of the moisture in the onion and meat from evaporating, and that will keep them from drying out. Last thing to do is seal the whole tray with aluminium foil. And that is how we guarantee the juiciest results. Now it's ready to go into the oven. Bake it at 180 degrees Celsius for two and a half to five hours, depending upon your cut of meat. From experience, I know three and a half hours will give me the most amazing lamb shanks. While the meat is cooking, let me tell you about our sponsor, Squarespace. Let's say you want to sell an online course all about Middle Eastern barbecue. Building a website from scratch will take weeks, but with Squarespace, you can build a beautiful website in no time at all. You simply select a template, update the colors, and put some of your own photos. Then you can browse through Squarespace's massive library of pre-built sections, like digital products and scheduling tools to find exactly what you need. Drag and drop them onto the website, then customize them with your own content. Website building doesn't get any easier than this. So if you've got knowledge worth sharing, start building a website on Squarespace. Then when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash middle eats to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. When there's about half an hour left on the cooking time, prep your sides. I'd recommend pairing this with vermicelli rice as it's perfect alongside the juicy onions. 
Wash one and a half cups of medium grain rice three to four times until the water runs clear. Then head over to the stove. Place a small pot over medium high heat, then add one tablespoon of butter, preferably clarified butter and leave it to melt. Once melted, add half a cup of short wheat vermicelli noodles. Stir fry them in the butter for about three minutes until they turn a deep brown color like this. Add the washed rice and continue frying for another two minutes until the rice turns opaque. You then add the seasonings, which are one and a half teaspoons of salt and half a teaspoon of black pepper. Mix well, then pour in some room temperature water. Bring the water level to two centimeters above the surface of the rice and turn the heat to high. Cover the pot with a lid and bring it to a boil. Then when it's fully boiling, set a timer for two minutes. When the time is up, the water level should have dropped below the rice. Turn the heat down to low and leave it to steam for 20 minutes. When those 20 minutes are up, it's time to fluff the rice. Use a fork to fluff it gently and you'll be left with the best rice for serving with saucy and juicy dishes. Right about now, the meat should be done. So it's time to peel back the layers of foil and paper to reveal the perfect meat beneath. These shanks always turn out stunning and glistening, though if you feel yours need some color, pop them under the grill for a few minutes. To serve, dish up plenty of vermicelli rice, then add your meat and a healthy pile of juicy onions. This dish might not be the prettiest looking thing, but give the bones a shake and you'll fall in love when you see the meat fall off. The smell of this in the oven was just killing me. Can't wait to dig in. This meat is so ridiculously tender that you don't even need to chew it. And those onions, wow, they're just sweet and packed full of so much flavor. Try it, you're not gonna regret it.